But there was no law that condemned Jesus. He, the crime that was at work, and what was at work here, was the work of envy. So this judge happens to be Pilate. Are you there? You are not there. You know, I told you the sons of Shem. Then the curse promoted Japheth to number two. Sons of Japheth before the sons of Ham. Okay? So I told you how that the move of God began with the Jews. And they were the ones that were apostles. And then the pendulum shifted to Europe. And those are the sons of Japheth. And then you will know men like John Knox and all the other people you have read about. People like Smith Wigglesworth. The hand of God was on that continent. And most of the books you read that inspired you came from Europe. It was because the pendulum had shifted to the land of Europe. And so the anointing of God began to pour out massively on that co continent in keeping with the pattern. This scripture that I'm reading to you is a congregation of the sons of Shem, sons of Japheth, and the sons of Ham. Now, when the case was brought to, Jesus, to, to Pilate, and for your information, Pilate is a Roman and he's a son of Japheth. Is that clear? So it was the son of Japheth that they brought the case to. And the people that brought the case were the sons of Shem. According to their own law, they had already considered Jesus guilty of treason. And the implication of treason was death. But because they were not a self-governing nation, they didn't have the legitimacy to effect and to prosecute that judgment. So they had to present it to the monarchs of the day and Rome was ruling. And what? I don't want to trouble you. Rome was ruling, so the, the representative and the defender of the justice system of Rome ha happened to be Pilate. So they brought the case before Pilate. So it has moved from the sons of Shem. The sons of Shem had condemned him to death. And they were now waiting on Pilate, who was a son of Japheth, to also concur. And Pilate made a discovery. After the whole procedure of justice, of judgment and equity, found out that this man was innocent. That the reason why he was brought was just because of envy. Now, he is a, he is a scholar, just like anyone that has read law. They understand they are highly intelligent people. So what he wanted to do, because his wife had come to him with a dream, that he should have nothing to do with this Galilee. So the man now, knowing that there was a bit of substance in the dream that the wife had brought, was able to find out that the real issue here is envy, not that he broke the law. And the way it was, it was in a political fix. Because if he refuses to give them their demand, there's going to be an uproar, and Caesar, from the heart of Rome, might find occasion to replace him with someone else. And he wants to keep his political power. So he now threw a card at them. He said, okay, this is the season of the Passover. And it's a tradition that we can release the prison. And one of the most notorious prisoners there that was held for murder was still in the cell awaiting judgment. And they were willing. And told them to say Parabas, 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 Parabas. You see, do you realize that it was easy for the chief priest to manipulate those people to be saying the wrong thing? That's how easy it is for a pastor to lead a generation astray. It is because of the power that God gives us 
that he will judge us with stiff measures because the strongest instruments by which God can colonize an entire tribe an entire people is the voice of a preacher so when that preacher aligns with darkness aligns with Satan Satan now has ground and a weapon this is the prayer I pray for myself every day that I will never be a weapon against my master Jesus not because I want to make money not because I want to make fame not because I want to hide a sin I pray this prayer every day most of the prayer I prayed yesterday before I came out was Jesus have mercy on me for hours for hours because I know humanity I know the vast nature of your soul how cruel the soul of a mortal can be I know it so I say have every day I ask God for mercy so that from the beginning to the end my record in the kingdom will be indeed the record of a man that served the will of God a wave can blow maybe you can be the friend of the next president and then you are brought into visibility you have a golden chain on your neck your financial situation just changes and then you come back home you no longer desire your wife the women of Johannesburg are more look more consistent with your current status you can become wicked overnight the chief priests were supposed to be the representatives of God in the land and here they were voting against God and campaigning against God with all of the structures that God made available to them with the breath he gave them that he can withdraw in a moment and there'll be no more but they used all of that strength the honor the the seat of Moses they used it to move the crowd so when they did that that was pilots Shem had sentenced Jesus to death. The sons of Japheth had sentenced Jesus to death. God had only one family to work with, the sons of Ham. And as Jesus was going to the cross, he had lost blood from the thorns. He has lost blood from everywhere, from the stripes. He was going to the cross and it was obvious that he did not have enough blood in his body to make that trip. That was a day and you need to know that redemption was hanging on that cross salvation was hanging on that cross forgiveness was hanging on that cross regeneration justification it was hanging there but according to the prescription that jesus was 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 fulfilling he had to die outside of the gate and there was no capacity for him to get there that was a day that that heaven prayed and they waited for it to answer I could I could imagine everybody in heaven on their toes because there was little intervention that could be brought in that situation the only, the only possible intervention that will suffice under that circumstance was for a son of Ham to appear and the sons of Ham are in in the wilderness of Egypt and the wilderness of Libya and Ethiopia far away and it came to pass by the sovereignty of God that Simon the Cyrenian from ancient day Libya I don't know what the guy was doing around instantly the sovereignty of God went to work and it was 
a son of Africa that took the cross outside the city. You know, you are forgetting the, the scripture that I read to you. Can you still remember that scripture? That he might sanctify the people with his own blood. He suffered how? Then there is a, 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 a message. Verse 13. Where, where are you in 13? He said, let's go. The man that fulfilled this pattern was Simon the Cyrenian. And he had Im implicated Africa. Implicated you that you are a preacher today. Simon the Cyrenian. Now, based on what Simon did, are you there? You still remember? From Europe, from Europe, the pendulum revival moved to the United States in the 19th century. William Seymour and the, all the other people that began to become evangelists. The evangelists were restored. The Catherine Kuman, Billy Sunday, and then the restoration continued. Restoration continued. And America became so wealthy. Most times what happens that distracts the people of God is that a regime of wealth comes into the territory. Now, those of you that are older, or if you have access to history, when, when there was persecution, there was, there was suppression of our black brothers eh? during the time of suppression. That's when the purest Christianity existed in this land. Oh, a regime of wealth came and liberty. And with it, all the things that we have seen. Those days, the only outlet to ventilate was the God of heaven. So mighty people, mighty men, apostles and prophets in their own right, began to rise. So the pendulum had to move from the United States. Not the last quarter of the sons of Japheth to Africa. Because we are the ones that are going to finish the, the, the story. In a relay race, no one is giving any medal until the last runner finishes to run. And so when all the other camps had rejected Jesus and sentenced him to death, there was only one race that never sentenced him. And that's why the last revival of all times will be on the theater of the continent of the black people. He said, I'll, you can clap if you want. But this is a message that is directly to us in view of the above. The ministry that will come out of the continent of Africa cannot be separated from the cross. That is the emblem, the essence, the cross. You know, there was, I hope you know the place of the cross theologically. The cross is the great divide. It's the divide between the old creation and the new creation. Everything from the old creation is under the sentence of death. The cross is the symbol of death. So the judgment, the verdict, the language, the, the vocabulary of the cross is Dead. That's all the cross says. Are you with me? Are you there? Can I press further? Do you realize that if death is not ministered to that your anger, that anger is going to destroy everything you built for so many years. I've seen people that because of their inability to submit their anger to Jesus so that the cross can minister death to it. I've seen that anger destroy the entire ministry. Oh, have you, do you realize that it doesn't matter how long you pray and how many dead people you've raised from the dead. When you commit immorality with two people and the news goes out, the anointing might still be on you, but people won't trust you again. It means there was something that was alive in you that ought to have died, but you did not present it to the cross. The, the, the gospel that is designed to rise. Part of what was wrong with the, with the gospel in the United States, they took the cross out. 
So it became a, 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 a movement without reference. They didn't have the ability to make new and to give life anymore. Oh, have you, have you heard the desire of Paul, the prayer of Paul? That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. I'm still telling you this because you are ministers. So. If you are not ministers, we know what to tell believers. And we can dance. In fact, I have not danced the Zulu dance since I came. I will, I will, a session will come when I will dance it. Oh! I'm telling you this because you are the gatekeepers of the land. I just brought a message on the other side of this continent. So that you know that it's time for us to take our journey. journey. To know that our destiny has already implicated us. And it is God's will that the least among us become as strong as David. Oh, he said that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. And for your information, the power of his resurrection is the spiritual capital that drives your Christian life. What God did is that he, he used that spiritual capital to solve man's greatest problem, which is to raise his from the dead. Death is man's greatest problem, and that spiritual capital solved it. It means it can solve your poverty problem. It can solve your sickness problem. It can solve your breakthrough problem. Are you with me? He said, I need to know the power of his resurrection so that every aspect of my life will resurrect out of the control, the dominion of darkness and the full potential, maximum capacity utilization can be achieved on every front of my life, every front of my possibility. And when you step into my home and you see the way my children are ordered, the people living with us, the thing you will know this is, is something else is at work here. It, it has resurrected. It no longer takes the form as it was under the fall. But it, it, it lives. Your family life is according to the breath of the living spirit. Say that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. But as you know the power of his resurrection, you must be brought into alignment with the fellowship of his suffering. The cross will be administering his death verdict on anything that is in your vessel that has the potentiality of rebelling against God, the cross. You see, your, your experience of the spirit, it grows pari passu with your experience of the cross. Is when the cross has brought to death that the spirit cannot come and bring to life by himself. So that that aspect of your life lives by the spirit and not by the flesh. It was the cross that was at work when God said, for seven years, you need to use buses. My desire to ride big cars died. If you give me one, I will take I'm not allergic to it. But you know what? You know what? I, I can acknowledge that this car is fine, but I don't desire it. I know that I can fulfill my destiny, my purpose without it. Do you understand what? So I'm not a slave to it. I can live without it. If I have one, to God be the glory, I'll not be, I will not be religious and say, no, no, it's demonic, no. If I have one, I will use it. But you know what? Even while I'm inside, I'm detached from it. Remember what, remember what Jesus told Peter. He said, lovest thou me more than this? Oh, your idea of a man of God is that if you are not in a Range Rover, it will diminish the sense of your being. You are a baby. Sell ice cream. I saw, I saw the highest levels of toxic pastoring and, and, and Christianity in South Africa. A man that claims to be a preacher, he had a, a motorcade, he had the dispatch riders. I knew that the days of darkness had come. That as long as those people walk the streets of south africa it was not time for me to come oh you need something to add to the sense of your being what if we just walk like this and walk into limpopo and raise two crippled people peter said silver and gold i have not 
but such as I had. He had something that could not be numbered in currency and in cash. So it means he was not empty, even though his pocket had nothing. There was still something he could spend from. Such as I have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ. For seven years, God had to teach me that the nature of a man's life is not dependent on his physical substance. It is his spiritual substance. For no man can receive anything except to be given to him from above. And in order for Saul to really see, God had to make him blind. The cross that is our mess that is what will make us credible oh, listen to me imagine jesus going to the to god got with the cross and then you now come to him and say that business contract he's been looking for it has finally see because they because of the cross he can't consider that business you say okay he, he, that suit the golden suit from dubai that he, he ordered he just arrived with the cross here Queen from Cape Town that he desired, she has accepted this proposal. With the cross here, he can no his soul can no longer be no. Except you bear it, you will become a liar in your old age. Your life will contradict your preaching in the days to come. The things you built. You will need to come and apologize that it was a lie. Do you still remember uh, those days? At least it has come down now when, when the, the grace movement. You still remember it? Oh, you don't remember? Okay. Since you don't remember, let's forget about it. Let's pretend that it didn't exist. Let's try again. You, do, do you still remember? Oh, you do. <laughs> It was a movement that lacked the cross. What made it wrong was there was no cross. It was a teaching that gave access to the appetites of the fallen man. Taking advantage of the allowance of forgiveness. To abuse grace according to the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 1 and 2. It was from the pit of hell. Anytime you take the cross out, the Christianity will be pioneered by satan so the first thing in this scripture which is a direct consequence of what implicates us because of the season in which we find ourselves well, our gospel has happened. if i had time i would have done a refresher course here on bearing the cross it's a new testament doctrine which which we no longer remember sons of africa black men with black skin will bring hope to the dying world i was there in the heart of europe in brazil and then you see someone and then the pastor that invited me was said he's a man no? he's not a woman he? is he a man yes a man now do you know what the, the question is what gospel will you preach to him someone that has gone into that level of deception He said, look at his leg, look at his leg. It's with his leg you used to know. And, and don't look straight, oh. use the corner of your eye. <laughs> A spirit of wodom that colonized Sodom and Gomorrah is back. And it's back with a vengeance. It's back with a tempest. Back with force, back with power. The things you preach, can he, he, does he have the ability to This is our window. 
I don't know how long it will be open. But salvation is in Africa. And so I have moved from place to place. From Kenya. Moved to Togo. Moved to Cameroon. Today I'm here. And I will not stop moving. On the continent. Until the least among our numbers becomes as strong as David. Go back to my scripture. So the first thing you see in that scripture, we need to reintroduce the cross. We have unbridled desires. Do you, are, you, are you with me? I 